Now, DDB's worldwide CEO, Charles Brimer, is in India after four long years post the Mudra acquisition to assess DDB's business and clients in India, as well as to get a sense of how the Indian market dynamics is evolving. Given that DDB has had a good innings globally, is its India arm at par or is it falling short? Well, let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. That's Chuck Brimer himself. Thank you so much for joining us, Chuck. Truly a pleasure having you on Brand Equity. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks. So, Chuck, first things first, how has your trip been so far? It's been great. We've uh, spent a lot of time um, at our offices here. I've gotten to know uh, some of the things that we're doing a little bit better. I've also uh, been out and seen some of our clients, um, which has been terrific. Been able to catch up and understand more about the work we're doing, but also to get their perspective on the Indian marketplace. Sure. How would you say life has changed post the acquisition now that you have full control of Mudra and, and DDB is truly, uh, you know, a, a true representative of, you know, DDB Global in India? Well, I think since, since we made the acquisition, we've obviously gotten much closer to the business than we were before um, because now, um, obviously, it's, it's a much more, um, it's a fuller partnership between our business and the Indian business here. So. Um, I think what we've seen is we've, we've made huge progress in terms of bringing the company closer uh, to the DDB um, construct in terms of what the culture is, what we stand for, our type of uh, the business offer that we have. Chuck, I want to talk to you about your uh, global talent acquisition and in particular, of course, about Wendy Clark, who you've got from Coca-Cola. And I must say she's quite a hire. But if I'm not wrong, uh, you know, you've been trying to hire Wendy from, since the first time you met her, which I believe was a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. We hired Wendy Clark in January of this year. She started, um, but I've known Wendy for just about ten or fifteen years. She was actually my client uh, at AT and T many years ago, um, and and it was great to uh, to come back and reunite with her after about ten years. But I've been trying to hire Wendy Clark for for ten years, <laughs> so uh, we were very happy that it finally came to fruition. Give me a sense of what you said to her to convince her to join DDB, because you know. It's quite a transition to move from, uh, you know, a client side to an agency side because usually you, you do it the other way around. Agency folks move, move on to becoming clients, but we never have that reverse option. So how do you convince her to come on board? And, and given Wendy's profile and the fact that she's assisted Hillary on her campaign recently, what did you tell her that made her agree to be, uh, you know, heading DDB North America? Well, I think, I think, you know, hopefully, hopefully uh, my persuasiveness helped a little bit <laughs> in getting her to come across. But also, like I said, I, I've known Wendy for some time, and, and Wendy Clark is a phenomenal marketer. Um, she's a real force in the marketplace. I think she's an agent of change. Uh, and I think what Wendy brings to DDB is she brings a, a, an understanding um, from a client side, which I think is really, really um, important. And she understands, I think, what the dynamics are that the clients are undergoing, some of the challenges they face. And she's architecting for us what a modern agency looks like and a more progressive agency, an agency that is working, you know, uh, perhaps a little bit differently than we've had in the past. I mean, we're getting much more closer to real-time content development. We're looking at uh, whole new ways of, of, of optimizing um, that content and bringing it to the marketplace. And we're obviously looking at technology and understanding how we can deliver our ideas in very different new formats. And I think from Wendy's side, she brings I th a, a, a clear understanding of how to, how to enable clients to use the tools that we have um, in, a, and I think, a very persuasive way um, to be more successful. Chuck, on a completely different note, I want to talk to you about this whole digital transformation that everybody is talking about and is giving almost everybody, I'm sure, including you, sleepless nights. Give me a sense in terms of what, what your view is about this beast called digital. Do you think it's very overrated? Do you think we're spending too much mind space and time and energy on this so-called hot platform? Or do you think uh, the amount of time, investments... Uh, and, and energy that we're spending with digital uh, is actually justified despite it not reaping the kind of results that, that we expect or we desire? Well, you know, I, I think that technology is what we should be talking about. I think the whole idea of digital um, is perhaps a word that we've, we've overused. I mean, digital to me is not, a, is not a media, it's not a channel. Digital is an infrastructure that connects people. And I believe that increasingly our job is going to be able to to not only create content as we always have, but use data to be able to optimize that content and deliver that content 
in very different ways. Certainly digital is, 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 a, is a part of that, but it's to me not necessarily a channel as much as it is just an infrastructure. Coming to India, why did you change the reporting structure of Madhukar Kamath? Why have you decided that um, Madhukar Kamath will directly report into you? Yeah, because a, a couple reasons. One is um, we wanted to make sure that uh, we were, and personally for myself, that I want to stay as close as I can to the Indian marketplace. We've invested a great deal of, uh, of time and resources into the Indian marketplace, and I wanted to feel um, very close to the work that we're doing here and get to know it um, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis. Also, I wanted David Tang to, to continue to focus efforts on, on Asia, um, in China, in Singapore, and some of the other markets. So for us, it just worked out that way, and, uh, and I think it's been a good result. Last question, Chuck. You've been very polite to the Indian market, and this next question of mine is a very tricky one. I know you're a visitor here, and you have to be politically correct. But I urge you to be candid. You've been to India before. Uh, you've been here now, you know, a few days. If you had to look around, you know, we talk about digital transformation. Would you say the Indian market is up to speed in terms of the happenings uh, as a market around the world? Or do you think we have a long, long way to go? The, the potential in India and what it will represent is obviously bigger than what it is now. It's an $8 billion market at the moment. It's going to rapidly expand past that. I mean, the population dictates that. Everybody talks about India's large population and potential, but has the market really delivered? We've been talking about our potential for years and the fact that, you know, we've been emerging for years. But, I mean, you know, for us to really emerge seems to be a long, long time away. Would you be in agreement with that? I believe you're, you're talking about it for years because it's there. There is significant potential here. Um, you know, it would be easy to say, look, it hasn't been fully realized and therefore, you know, I'm, I'm pessimistic. I, I'm not. I actually feel quite different. I believe that just the sheer scale of the market uh, leaves enormous potential and that potential um, is being starting to be realized and will continue to be realized as time marches on. Well, you've been very kind, Chuck. But on that note, thank you so much for taking time out and joining us right here on Brand Equity and have uh, a good India trip. All right. Thanks, Sonali.